Greetings, adventurers, and welcome back to Abnormal Voyages. My name is David, and today we find ourselves at Elmwood Cemetery in Chanute, Kansas. Now, considering our setting here, you may think we're doing a cemetery safari, but that is not the case. Here in front of me, we have the final resting place of two great explorers, Martin and Osa Johnson. They were explorers in the early 1900s and were in places far before a lot of people would ever touch that ground. They blazed trails that people hadn't been to before. This is where their story ended. But as we all know, it's not always about the destination, but rather the journey that got you there. So today, we are going to look at their lives, look at the adventures they had, and learn just a little bit more about them. Tag along. What better place to learn about somebody than their own actual museum? Just a few minutes away from the graves we just were at, we find the Martin and Osa Johnson Safari Museum. Inside, we're gonna find out not only about their adventures, but see tons of artifacts that they brought back with them to share with the world. Let's get inside. The love story of Martin and Osa Johnson is truly one for the ages. It all started here in Kansas. Now Martin was actually born in Illinois, but he was raised in Kansas and always considered it home. As a young boy, Martin was already filled with the spirit of adventure. His father would get in a lot of different crates from all over Europe that were marked with fascinating sounding places and Martin knew he had to visit them someday. By the time he was a teenager, he decided to put action behind his words, and he stowed away on a ship to finally arrive in Europe himself. Eventually, he actually charmed his way onto being part of the crew for Jack London's ship. They went around for a few years, and Martin gathered photographs and items from marvelous places far away from Kansas. He eventually made it back to the U.S. and started traveling around showing people these wondrous things. And that is where he met Osa. Martin was presenting in Shanut, Kansas, right here where this museum is, and the hometown of Osa. She was a singer at the time, and he was presenting at the theater where she sang. They met and... Not too long after, they were married in 1910. Now, Osa was brand new to the adventuring and exploring lifestyle, but it wasn't long before she loved it just as much as Martin. They spent several years traveling through the US and Europe, showing off all the marvels that Martin had brought back with him. And then in 1917, Martin and Osa took off for a nine-month trip, traveling through the Solomon Islands. At this time period, cameras and film, the entire concept of movies, was still very, very new. But the Johnsons believed this was the best way to really show people what was out there in the world. So they had their camera with them and were able to document some of the first experiences in this part of the world. Though being some of the first definitely meant there was a little bit of danger in everything they did. For example, when they were out in the Solomon Islands, one of the highlights of the trip was when they spent some time with a tribe called the Big Nambas. Once they were there, the chief of the tribe didn't want to let them go. 
They managed to escape, but it was quite the harrowing experience. Ironically enough, the footage that they got on this trip allowed them to make one of their first movies, which was called Among the Cannibal Isles of the South Seas. They actually came back to visit this tribe again about a year later, and they were worried that the tribe was going to maybe give them trouble and the chief try to keep them again, so they brought armed guards with them. But it turns out they didn't need those guards at all. The tribe was so entranced by seeing themselves in the film footage they brought that they were more than happy to let the Johnsons come and go as they pleased. The Johnsons finished that particular trip with a lot of new footage from all their sailing expeditions up the coast of East Africa, and then came back to release two more movies, Jungle Adventures and Headhunters of the South Seas. For the first time, Americans were getting exposed to this completely different culture. And I think it's safe to say they loved it. The Johnsons continued making expeditions into Africa, and in one instance, stayed for a couple of years. They actually set up in northern Kenya by a lake that they dubbed Paradise. These adventures and all the footage they gathered resulted in several more movies and growing fame for the Johnsons. In one case, they even took a tour of the Nile with the founder of Kodak. The footage they got on this trip became one of the very first talkies, which is movies with speech and actual sound in it, for the Johnsons. It was called Across the World with Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, and it included narrative all by Martin himself. The American public loved the Johnsons and all the thrilling adventures that they got to tag along on by watching these excellent films. There was even a contest from the Boy Scouts where three Eagle Scouts got to go on an actual safari with the Johnsons. Once these three boys got back, they all worked together to write a book about their experiences. We now find ourselves in 1932, right back here at Chanute, Kansas. This is where the Johnsons learned how to fly. They got their licenses and bought two planes. They named one Spirit of Africa and the other Osa's Ark. Now being able to fly, the Johnsons were able to add a whole new element to the films they were recording. Going over Africa, they captured footage that is still considered classic to this day. For the first time, you got an aerial view of herds of elephants making their way across the savanna. You got to see views of giraffes that nobody had ever gotten to film before. It really made these already thrilling films even more exciting. As a matter of fact, Martin and Osa are credited as the first pilots to ever fly over Mount Kenya and Mount Kilimanjaro to film them from the air. They really were pioneers in the adventuring field. Every new film the Johnsons put out, every new book they wrote, the public gobbled up as quickly as they could. The thirst for adventure was real. As a matter of fact, the Johnsons became so adored and so famous that they were the very first married couple ever to appear on a Wheaties box. I don't know about you, but I think once you can find yourself on a cereal box, you can officially say you've made it. We now jump to 1937. On January 12th, Martin and Osa got on a plane headed out to start a nationwide lecture. Unfortunately, the plane crashed, and the next day, Martin passed away from his injuries. Osa continued on, missing her beloved every day, but still writing of their adventures, including her autobiography, I Married Adventure, which was the best-selling nonfiction book of 1940. She would pass away of a heart attack, in 1953. Looking at their lives, I think it's clear that the only thing the Johnsons loved more than adventure 
was each other. And though they're gone, and this may be the first you think you're hearing of them, I can almost promise you they've touched something you've seen before. One of my favorite examples of this can be found in the Disney Pixar film Up. Not only are Carl and Ellie slightly inspired by the Johnsons, but the destination they dreamed to live in, Paradise Falls, was inspired by the place that the Johnsons lived for a few years in Africa, that peaceful, beautiful lake that they called Paradise. I like to think that that's where they are, together now and forever. Truly incredible lives filled with incredible adventures. Speaking of adventures, unfortunately it is time for this one to end. However, if you'd like to see some more, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, it always helps us out, and leave some comments of where you think we should go next. Plus, we have some special bonus adventures over on our Patreon. Link will be right below. My name is David, and this has been Abnormal Voyages. Thanks for tagging along. We'll see you next time. Come on, monkey. Thanks for watching.